For less than $200 and weighing half a pound, you can track them. And for just about $1,000, you can fly with HD vision just like a bird. In this video, we're gonna briefly set the stage for drone use today, and then look at an American startup Brink, who's bringing this technology to both law enforcement and first responders. Whether we're prepared for that infamous hum, drones are normalizing. They're cheap, they're easy to fly, and well, they can do a lot of things. We're well past military applications. Photographers and videographers basically must have them. Drone shows are replacing fireworks, and they're being used to keep infrastructure safe. Many of us first started hearing about drones in some pretty brutal context. A US strike so targeted, cars close by appear undamaged. These are multi-million dollar military platforms that date back to the early 2000s. And my God, did they seem to change the first two decades of the millennia. For the longest time, drones were military. It wouldn't be until 2013 when DJI released the Phantom 1 that this technology really began getting into the hands of consumers. And really when DJI releases the Mavic in 2016 and then the Mini in 2019, does this consumer tech start to accelerate at a crazy pace. Now we're talking 4K video quality for $1,000. And with the Mini, while it originally was only 2.7K, it was a few hundred dollars and skirted every bit of regulation you needed to technically register the drone because of its size and weight. With DJI, it wasn't just about price and camera quality. Anyone can operate these things. They're incredibly intuitive and really safeguarded by basically software. To move this thing will just take a few minutes, if not just a minute, to really get the idea of what's happening. Because of everything that happened on the consumer side, drones are just commonplace. There's a good chance that you've heard one, that you've seen one, or you've possibly even flown one. High quality photos and videos, easy to operate, a base 30 minute flight time at least, and super cheap. It was inevitable that startups would see the opportunity for remote viewing, for remote surveying, covering distance across large terrains, and build something that maybe fits not just the consumer, but an actual enterprise, a business. Zipline is delivering life-saving medical supplies to remote villages in Africa. Skydio is scanning critical infrastructure like bridges for defects, but delivery and infrastructure feels a lot different than when we start talking about law enforcement, everyday first responder usage as well. And those subjects aren't just where we're inevitably headed, we are actually here today. Airborne overwatch can dramatically increase mission success, but manned aviation is expensive. Drones are in use by SWAT and police departments today already. In fact, probably for about 10 years at this point. The idea is really simple too. Reduce the risk for all parties involved, cut response times, reach areas otherwise unreachable, and times otherwise impossible. If you have flown a drone, you know just how fast they can go, just how high they can go, just how far away from your own visual line of sight they can go, and again, how easy they are to operate. Two-way negotiations, but also dropping emergency medical supplies. SWAT surveilling a building, but also surveilling wildfires. These companies are not seeking to build weapon capabilities, rather make technology for public safety so that operators and personnel can operate with more information, allowing them to make easier and smarter decisions, ultimately leading to better and safer outcomes for, again, everybody involved. Let's have a look now at Brink, what they offer, and why their founding story is just so profound. Brink's on a mission. They're creating technology in the service of public safety. And this is most evident through their drone offerings, indoor tactical, outdoor response, and drones as first responders. Their flagship product, Lemur, may be one of the most unique drone offerings that I've come across. Lemur seems inseparable from SWAT. Designed for surveillance, mapping buildings, and what is a two-way communication device that allows you to actually, as an operator, talk with people on the potential other side. Maybe that's hostage negotiation, maybe that is simple search and rescue. Lemur is built on the Sinewoo platform, just like Mayavada. And if we look closely enough, we can get a sense of how these propellers are protected what the actual size and smallness of this drone is and where it may be usable, especially in this indoor environment. It can take and withstand hits. It can fall down and still be utilized again without breaking propellers or needing to be prepared. And in fact, there's a turtle mode where if it's turned over, it can flip itself upside down backwards again so that it can be used easily. The drone to break glass, allowing entry into structures or vehicles. 
When you add a glass breaker, Lemur can help get SWAT into buildings before they have to send personnel. Lemur boosts some other really impressive features like self-hovering that doesn't rely on GPS, meaning it can be completely usable indoors, underground, where you may not have all the signal required. With LiDAR sensors, they can actually map floors, send this data back directly to the operators for actual building floor plans. And they have a bunch of different camera feeds, not just HD vision, but also thermal and night vision. One absolutely crazy feature is mesh networking. If they, for example, are operating in a difficult connection environment, they can use multiple drones as a tethered networking device so that it's easier to send that data back to the end operator. Think of this as a chain helping alleviate poor communication environments. Brink also has Responder, the world's first purpose-made 911 response drone, even down to the flashing police lights. Remember, 911 can mean anything from a traffic accident to a building fire to delivering emergency medical supplies. It's not just limited to potential threatening violence. Emergency personnel can remote pilot a responder, monitor live video feeds, including thermal vision, and use two-way communications. You can also attach small payloads like an AED, an EpiPen, or Narcan. With multiple drones in a department, you can aggregate those live feeds together so you have a complete view of what's going on in an environment. Now, there are some amazing companies building drones and unmanned aerial systems. But for everything, building a product based on conviction doesn't guarantee sales. It doesn't guarantee that it solves anybody's problems. And when we think of 911, we have to imagine the most stressful situations operated often under extreme pressure and with a lot of uncertainty. It's especially important that those are the individuals giving you feedback on the product that you're trying to sell them. And it's even better if you build that product from the ground up based on feedback that you may have even observed in a real seat. Brink's founder, Blake Resnick, shares the story that got him on this path. Metro, please put your hands up! There's an active shooter in the hotel, okay? Stay locked in your room, thank you. It was the Las Vegas shooting, the deadliest shooting in American history by a single gunman. Blake Resnick, not even 20 years old, decided to get in touch with the Las Vegas Police Department to learn about what happened, to get an understanding. And just by getting an honest account, he got to understand what the challenges were. Like plain clothed officers who drew their guns only to be misidentified and mislabeled during all the chaos as active shooters themselves, resulting in a bunch of new calls into 911. And said, you know, this is a pretty cool thing. Um, we'd be interested in maybe testing it out on some live SWAT callouts, and you've been decent to work with, so if you're interested, we'd love to invite you along on some of those missions, and you can see if it does well or poorly and maybe keep improving it. So it started a, a very interesting six month period of my life where I basically went on call with Vegas Metro SWAT. Blake kept this relationship alive. And as he started building past prototype version one onto version two and three, he was invited by Las Vegas SWAT to do ride-alongs, to get a chance to be in this environment and to maybe, just maybe test this product. The lessons learned in that journey and that close relationship with actual operators no doubt shaped the unique features that ended up being part of Brink's greatest offerings. Like just how novel it is to have a two-way communication system that actually just works. As simple as it may sound, they even built a ball product that is just this, a two-way communication system. And that's because others and the existing companies just weren't listening to the end operators. So now the question, are we ready for drone responses to emergencies? For one, I think it's much easier to imagine a worst case scenario, the dream nightmare, a panicked airspace completely crowded, buzzing everywhere. And it might be fun in sci-fi futurism to think that way, but it seems so far from the case. Drone adoption is inevitable, but it's going to be measured and it's going to take a lot of time. Like any new technology, there needs to be training, there needs to be learning, and it needs to be practical to actually implement it. Well, when you're asking police and fire departments to bring on a new skill, a new capability, especially when those departments aren't growing in personnel, you're asking already busy individuals doing really important work to take on another task, to spend more time than they may not have. And there's public perception. We need to be educated in this area. And that's exactly what Brink, and in fact, one of their customers in New York State wanted of them. They wanted a campaign that helps educate people about what's happening and why these services are going to be used. Things are also gonna look very different depending on where you are. If you're in a suburb or if you're in a city, well, if you're in a suburb and it takes you 15 minutes to commute for groceries versus being on a city block where retail is at the bottom of your stairs, things are looking way different in terms of a natural first response. Chances are the rural area, the more suburban area, actually can benefit from way faster response times 
Whereas there's likely a good growing network and large amount of people already in the city ready to take these calls. And noise? This still remains to be seen. Well, if the majority of SWAT calls are happening between 2 and 3 a.m., are you even up to hear that? And if the fire department is searching forest fires out in the wild, are you around to see or hear that? There are gonna be a ton of other concerns about privacy, about safety. How do you have a fleet of drones flying above cars and people? All of this, I'm not here to answer for you. There's gonna be trade-offs in any operation, but we are at the early point of a trend that seems inevitable and also a trend that seems like it can actually have a material difference, especially in some communities, especially out there in the wild. Summing up, I'm pretty excited for quite a few of the companies building in this space. I'll do my best to find a couple more that I think are pretty cool and entertaining, especially when they have products in the public where it's way easier to find some of the videos so we can share how they're actually portraying the products or when we can find other people who've had a chance to test them. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, Above all, leave a comment. What other companies do you know in this space? What other ideas, threats, concerns may you have for companies trying to do this? And we'll talk about them. We'll see if I can flesh out some more details. These are still early companies, so it is pretty challenging to find what an accurate public view may be, what an accurate public circumstance may be, but I'll do my best.